welcome uh, to the last Room for Discussion interview of the year. Today, uh, the first batch of new government officials are being grilled by Parliament. We are 11 days away from the next government, yet the formation process and the election has, felt, has left many people feel disillusioned. How much room is there for cooperation and faith in a seemingly cynical political world? To discuss this, we're very happy to host Gerjan Segers. Gerjan Segers is the former head of the Christian Unity Union and crucial for the formation of Rutte III and IV. We're going to reflect with him on the past election, the formation, the changing role of religion and the discussion climates. Um, I'm Max. I'm Jonathan. And please welcome Gerard Segers. Welcome. Thank you. Good to have you. Thank you. Good to see you. Welcome. Hello. So we want to begin with the end. Um, we've seen a lot of government officials now um, do their final speeches in Parliament. And it's surprising many amounts of them ended with Bible verses. Margaret, I saw it. Yeah, Margaret included, uh, yep. including Margaret. What would have been a, politically, a particularly inspiring Bible verse for you? Ooh. Well, then, it's the final part of 1 Corinthians 13 that says, there is uh, faith, there is hope, there is love, and uh, the most important of the three is love. I think that something like that, that would have, would have been my, my verse. And that would describe the current political climate, or is that a little... Uh, no, that would be an encouragement to love each other a little bit more than uh, we are currently doing. So, um, a little bit of more, more of love, that would be uh, helpful. Yeah. Um, but now beginning with the beginning, as I'm sure as yes. many of the Dutch audience here knows, is you've lived in Egypt for seven yes, years. I know. Yes, <laughs> Why go that way, there specifically? Why there? Why there? Because I was asked. Um, I... My wife and I, when we got married, we went to uh, West Africa. We were um, hit by poverty, by small churches, the stories of people. And we simply said, well, we are available to, uh, to do something good. So we want to give some of the best years of our life uh, helping other people. And then I came to, to know a guy, in, and he... he um, I met a guy who said, well, uh, uh, are you open to uh, going to Egypt? And I simply said, yes, because, I mean, we were available. We were uh, ready, ready to go. And so when the, the question is asked, then um, um, the final re uh, the response is, of course, yes, I'm available. So that was, uh, that was why we went to Egypt. So after years focused on religion and then study, you went into politics. Yeah. Uh, what drew you to the world of politics initially? Um, that's a mixture. Um, uh, I'm interested in politics, so when I was young, uh, probably like you, uh, I was looking at debates, I was looking at second chamber, parliament, discussions, uh, campaigns. That was a kind of interest. And uh, the second thing is my, my faith. I mean, I want to uh, make it visible, I want to make it work, um, so it's not something only for Sunday, not only something for the heart but it's for um, reality. So I want to be with God in the midst of society. That was my, my, my desire. That's my, I feel my, my calling. If I can use the big word calling, um, I feel that's, that's my calling. Uh, and how do you think your time in Egypt shaped um, your time in politics? Um, of course. I mean, I, I took experiences, lessons from, from, from that time. Um, I saw the impact of... Poverty, the big gap between rich and poor, um, a not uh, functioning government, a government that is not really democratically elected, um, the role of religion, it can be a blessing, but it can also be a curse, how it's dividing people, uh, the role of minorities, so freedom is a very important uh, issue. So I saw people who were raised as a Muslim, but then uh, wanted to leave Islam, and they were not safe. Uh, I saw the fate of refugees, Sudanese refugees. So all these exper uh, experiences uh, shaped my view and, and uh, made me value freedom, uh, rule of law, uh, democracy, 
cooperation, uh, civil society, all these factors, um, yeah, I, I think they were shaped by the Egyptian experience. Interesting. And so you've always been open about your religiosity, and you've been the head of a Christian party. Um, how do you combine your role as a people's representative uh, and your own religious beliefs in a country that is increasingly a secular country? Um, yes, I always sensed that I was part of a minority. Um, as I grew up outside of the Bible Belt, so I, 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 I always felt I'm just a little bit of an outsider. I'm, I'm different than, than others. Uh, so that's a, that's a sense that I always have had uh, till, till today. Um, and that makes me value the rule of law and freedom, a freedom of religion, uh, the freedom to believe and uh, not believe in anything. I mean, that's, that's uh, the same value, that's the same, fr uh, same freedom. Um, and what also is important is when you are part of a minority, when you, are, when you feel a little bit different, uh, you have the same right to speak up, uh, to be part of society, um, and to, 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 to shape the future of your country as any other. Uh, so as a minority, I, 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 as part of, as member of a minority, I stepped in and said, well, I, I want to make um, my faith work. Um, I want to love my neighbor. Um, but also I want to be a Christian in a secular country and live my life and be faithful to myself, but also faithful to a society that is very plural, very, very diverse. Um, so that's, that's, that's how I combine both. Did you ever feel like you had to choose between the two? Your faith to yourself, your faith to a very plural society, plural Netherlands? You mean like being true to yourself? And yeah, true to yourself, to your beliefs, while also having to represent more than well, just your base. Well, of course, in, in politics, you have to compromise. And then it's always the question, I mean, what is a good compromise? I mean, what is, how can you... Um, have faith in your values and, 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 and be faithful to your, to your values and work together with people with complete different opinions. And then, of course, you, you, you end up somewhere in the middle uh, and working together with liberals in a very liberal society. Of course, that's, there's, there's tension. It's easier to, to go to a monastery and, and stay away from everything. That's, that, that's easier, but, but that's not what I wanted to do. If my faith is, is, is real, it has to be real in reality, and, um, and I, I want to live in peace with everyone else. I mean, even, with, uh, even also with people with completely different uh, uh, opinions. I hear you talking a lot about working with people with different beliefs, mm -hmm. but part of being a politician is also getting votes. So yes. during your term, how much time did you spend on trying to appeal to non-religious voters for the Christian Union? Not specifically. I mean, if people said, well, if you... Some people said, if you change the name of your party, now it's Christian Union, if you say it's People Union, then probably I would vote. Uh, human Being Union. Um, I said, well, then, then I lose something very central to, to our party and to our uh, tradition. So I don't want to do that. Um, but as the Christian Union and uh, as the, the, the policy of the Christian Union is a policy coming out of Christian tradition, it should be good for everyone. It should be right and fair to everyone. So we always try to serve all of society and not only um, our cons uh, constituents, not only our voters. Um, so that was the reason why we were part of a coalition government. I mean, you want to serve all of society. And then if, when people are willing to vote for me, well, that's fine. Then um, I'm happy with that, of course. You've had a quite tumultuous, uh, tumultuous might not be the correct word, but you've done a lot in your time at the Christian Union, uh, in opposition, in government, yet your final seat count every election didn't really seem to change that much. Why do you think that is? What do you say about the um, election? About the um, at the parliamentary election, yes. your final seat count yeah. didn't seem to change. A no, whole lot. so it was five seats. Five seats, yeah. Yeah, but it was hard work. So it was not like a given. Some people, they said, well, you always have five seats, as if something uh, given in reality that's always there. Well, now the Christian Union has three votes, uh, three seats. Um, so 
the five seats, I mean, I had to fight for it every time, especially when you're in a coalition government and you have to compromise. Then sometimes people are not happy and then you have to explain, this is my ideal, this is my vision, this is reality, there is a gap between these both, but still, I, I, I want to bring my ideal and my, my, my vision a little bit closer uh, into reality. That's my fight. And so it took a lot of time and a lot of energy to go to the voters and to explain why I did what I did, uh, why we were part of the coalition government, working together with secular liberals uh, who were, for some people in, in, in the Bible Belt, uh, the, the most evil people, I mean, the worst people in the world. And I was working with them and saying, well, they're people. I mean, we share the same country, we, sh we share the same system. So we sh of course we should work together. But it took a lot of energy to explain and to encourage them to uh, stay faithful to the party. But that's hard work, very hard work. So I, I had a fight within politics, within the coalition, a lot of fights, but then also a fight outside. I mean, to, to, to stay connected to the people who, um, who voted me and gave us their trust. So um, argued most famously by Habermas, religious individuals need to translate their religious beliefs into a secular reasoning in order to be able to engage in the public sphere. Do you agree with that idea? Um, yes, because um, when, when people say, um, for example, when you, when you there was, a, was an important issue in, in my time, and it was an end of life issue. When, so D66, a liberal party, came up with a proposal with a law that said, if you are 75 or older and you think your life has ended, I mean, it doesn't have any value anymore, you should have the right to end it. And I said, well, I think that's a very wrong idea, a, a very dangerous idea even. Um, then sometimes people told me, say, well, that's, that's your opinion, that's fine, but that's only because you are a Christian. So they try to corner me in a, in a, in a corner. You have re religious beliefs, you are a Christian, that's why you have this opinion. Um, well, all right, but don't bother us. I mean, uh, st stay out of the decision making. So my role was to explain or to translate my deepest conviction into secular language in a way that when I speak about the value of life, the value of elderly people, the right to live, uh, care of vulnerable people in our society, um, that's still connected to my faith, that's still connected to my deepest conviction, but in a language and in a way that, well, still you can disagree, but it's, it's accessible for everyone. And that's my, that's my role, I believe. So it's not my role to, to preach and to quote scripture and say, well, you cannot vote for this piece of legislation because of, and then I come up with a Bible verse. Uh, that's not my role. My role is to, to translate into what is right and what is wrong, what, is, what are the values, uh, who are the people we have to serve. But it was hard work, but that's exactly what, as you described. That was my, what I believed was my role. But surely that's a very difficult thing to compromise on. Uh, if issues as right to life might be yeah. much more uh, difficult to come to an agreement than marginal tax rates or something yes. you can find common ground on. Yeah. You were in a government with D66 yeah. for two governments. How can you compromise on issues that are so fundamentally moral and so different? Yeah. That's hard. That's, that's, that's really hard because... Um, when it came to this piece of legislation, the, 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 the right to end your life, even when you don't suffer physically or mentally or if you don't have an issue, uh, I felt that's a very fundamental issue and I don't want to be part of a shift, a change, that's so fundamental. So I, I, I told in, uh, that was in uh, 2017, and we were needed for a majority in, in, in Rutte, the, the, the third coalition of, uh, uh, under the leadership of Mark Rutte. Uh, and I thought, well, if this piece of legislation is on the table, um, I mean, we will, we will step out of the coalition. I mean, I will not be part of, of that decision. But we can work on a different agenda where we can agree. How can we fight loneliness? How can we improve care for elderly people? How can we improve the housing of elderly? So there are many items, many issues that we agree on. 
and, and, and that we, values we share. So let's, let's, let's work on that. But of course, there were also moments that I was in splendid isolation, that I was just a few seats in, in Parliament agreed with me. So sometimes you have to take your, your loss. So I never voted, when it comes to these fundamental issues, I never voted against my deepest conviction. But sometimes I lost the fight within the coalition. I cannot win every fight, but, but this particular fundamental issue when it comes to the right to end your life when you're 75 or above, um, that's still not uh, a law. So we were able to, to stop it, not because I'm such a clever politician, but because the reasons we, we, um, we had were shared by many others. People, uh, uh, doctors, and 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 um, all kind of unions in in the in the medical sphere. Uh, people who were um, taking care of, of of elderly people. I mean, lots of different people uh, joined this this discussion, and even people from other parties, secular parties, say, "Well, we we agree on this issue." So it was not only m my personal view and not not my clever political. Uh, uh, behavior that uh, stopped this bill, but it was uh, good reasoning. But a bit on the topic of you being a clever politician, I think um, what we've seen in both of the three and four is that you've managed to get a fairly relatively small uh, amount of seats and get yep. really crucial <laughs> policies and ministries. So why do you think, despite these differences, people like working with you so much? I don't know if they always liked working with me. <laughs> Sometimes they hated me, but um, we were we were ready to cooperate, and that's that's an, an attitude that is very rare these days, um, and that's something that I that 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 really worries me, um, because it's it's easier, it's it's more profitable if you tell what others are doing uh, wrong. If you uh, just stay on the sideline and just criticize politics, criticize a government, um, but the willingness to cooperate, to step in and say, well, I want to work together, even with people with complete different convictions, that attitude uh, is very rare. But, but that was our attitude. That was the attitude of the Christian Union. That's why we were... So when I, when, I, when I started politics in 94, so I became an assistant to uh, members in parliament, um, we were completely on the outside of the political spectrum. Uh, we were Christian party, uh, not relevant, and now we have been in the heart of decision making, political decision making, already for what is it, uh, 15 years or something. So that's very strange, and it's not because we are different, maybe a little bit, or we changed a little bit, but. The, the whole political climate and, and, and the climate in society really changed. And you see how difficult it is to create a coalition government. I mean, right now, as you said, the, the new members of the cabinet are being grilled. Uh, so they are in parliament and, 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 and telling what to do. Now it looks like that the, the, the cabinet we have, the coalition we have, it's not one cabinet, it's not one coalition, it's four coalitions, four different parties, four different stories, and and very hesitant to work together. They don't like each other. They don't share the same values. It's really, really difficult. They have to because they won the elections. But it, you see how difficult it is these days to work together with people who are different. So um, as you just said, uh, you have been very influential in um, Dutch politics. Uh, however, another religious party with a stable base uh, has not been able to govern a single time, and that's the SGP. Uh, where does the Christian Uni uh, differ from the SGP? Well, I was born in a uh, part of the church that that is like uh, that is supporting the SGP. So that's that's an Orthodox for people who are not um, familiar with it. That's that's a, a, an Orthodox Christian uh, party. Um, why I stepped out of that party was because of religious freedom. Um, so the rule of law is is for me is. Say uh, is 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 holy. I mean, it's 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 very uh, important. So if you enjoy rights, if you enjoy freedom, you should give the same freedom, the same rights to people who believe something completely different. Um, we always have had this tradition in the Netherlands. The Jewish community was um, got a certain amount of freedom 
in the Netherlands for the first time in the Western world. I mean, the Netherlands was the first country that gave a minority uh, freedom and rights. And for me, that is, that is uh, sacred. That is uh, very, very important. And they come out of a tradition where they say, well, we enjoy certain freedom and rights, but if we have the majority, a minority would not have the same rights um, as we have. And I think that's fundamentally uh, wrong. So that's something that, that, that why I stepped out of that, that party. Um, though they are faithful to scripture and they want to be Christian in politics as I wanted to be. Okay, um, one drawback of entering a coalition, as you've already uh, hinted to, is having to compromise. Yeah. Uh, you likened scrapping the dividend tax to swallowing a melon. <laughs> um, why, did you, why do you choose to continue with it? Uh, not every day. I mean, it was... Uh, um, at least not every day swallowing a melon <laughs> um, as a metaphor for um, making a difficult compromise. Yeah, that was uh, the dividend tax. Uh, we said, well, we are not uh, in favor of it, but it's part of the part of the agreement, so um, we have to take it as it is. Um, because I I want to serve my nation. I want to to uh, uphold a tradition and a culture in which um, people with different backgrounds come together, sit around the table and live together and work together and compromise. I mean, look at what is happening in the, in the US right now. I mean, it's, it's, it's one half of, of the country standing opposite of the other half. And it's sometimes it looks like very close to a civil war. Um, so if this is the future of Western democracy, I mean, it's very dangerous, very, very dangerous. Uh, and our system encourages us to sit around the table. And I wanted to uphold that tradition, even when it's very hard and very difficult, even when people don't like and say, you are a traitor, you are not faithful to your, uh, to your faith or to your convictions. I wanted to, to, to uphold that, that culture of cooperation. Do you think the Netherlands is heading uh, to a similar situation as the US? We'll talk a lot about the mm. hardened discussion of climate, but yep. it's fair to say that the Netherlands has its own problems. Yes. Um, are we heading to a point where, just like the U.S., tensions are really, really, really high? Well, the, um, so the political system saves us from, from, from that dangerous spot because it, it forces now parties, including the Freedom Party of Geert Wilders, um, um, which is, for me... Uh, when you look at, at, at the content of policy and what they stand for, is a very worrying sign. But they force them to have responsibility, to sit around the table and to do something for, for the country. Um, but culturally, we have the same tendencies. We have the same um, kind of debating with each other. We have the same impact of social media. Social media has a changed policy, changed our debate, changed our national discussion in a way that um, people tend to go to their own bubble and look at others at, as, a, as, a, as a physical enemy, as someone who wants to destroy them, so they have to des destroy the enemy. That's, that's the kind of language we, that social media is encouraging, and that's the kind of dynamics that is coming out of, of, of social media. So we have the same cultural... Um, uh, yeah, way of debating with each other, but our system is saving us from uh, a situation like we are witnessing right now in the U.S. Um, you were a part of the three and four. Yeah. Um, and you d decided to enter both coalitions yeah. for with a little bit more uh, hesitation. Absolutely. If you look at the current, uh, the win of the BVV, uh, not that I think that is to be fully attributed to Rutte's government. Do you still think you've made the right decision deciding to enter those governments, both of them? Well, especially the last one. That was, of course, that's, that's a question I've asked myself many, many times. Did I do the right thing? I know that I was trying to do the, good, uh, the right thing. I, 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 I was doing it with the, the right intention, um, and that was after seven months of... Um, people not moving away from their position, uh, blocking each other, 
blocking parties and not willing to uh, to sit around the table and and um, and talk then i thought well i i don't want to see the end of our system the end of our political culture of cooperation i don't want to see the end of that um being caused by a decision that i that i made i said uh, after a, a very very heated debate in the second chamber in in parliament uh, we will not be part of Rutte four, so the the, the 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 last cabinet. That's 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 what I said. Why? Because I thought a continuation of the same coalition in a climate of distrust would be v would would be very bad. I mean, it will not build up. It will not regain the trust that the political system needs. So I thought we need to. There has to be another coalition. So I tried for seven months to 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 encourage others to to um, create this coalition, um, and it didn't work. I mean, it was it 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 people were not willing to uh, bridge the gap, and so then I said in the final um, final position, I don't want. I mean, this cannot end with my final no, with my hesitation or my my blockade. So. If there's no other option, um, I'm willing to talk. Well, then you blink with your eye. I mean, then you 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 move. I mean, then you give space and room for people to say, okay, he's willing to talk. Um, so sometimes I I wonder maybe I should have continued a little bit longer. I should have waited a little little longer. Um, but still, I know what my intention was, and when I see the outcome. After one and a half year, the coalition collapsed, and um, and now the the Freedom Party, the Populist Party, gained a lot of seats and is now the number one uh, party. It's not the outcome that I that I hoped for. And one of the reasons of the distress was, of course, the Tuslag Affaire. Yeah, you are currently uh, the super head of the supervisory board that helps re re uh, uh, helps uh, yeah. re restitute restitute some of the people that were damaged by it. Yeah. When you talk to those people and hear those stories, um, is those is that not the moment where you understand you get confronted by the decisions you made during those two governments, those of three mm. and four, and the distress that it caused, and isn't then later on trying to fix the problem a little too late? Um, this 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 drama is. Um is is a symbol of what government can do to people and 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 the failure of the current current government um and it's a it has been a disaster um i was not in a decision making position so i was not in a position that that directly uh, caused the, the 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 whole drama um but why i'm in the advisory board and why i'm a volunteer at this foundation that is trying to help fix the, the the horrible damage and and uh, and now listening to the painful stories of these of these parents who have been um, who have been followed by the government and have been in crisis a, a personal crisis for sometimes ten or fifteen years I mean with a lot of debt and a lot of uh, damage caused by the uh, by by government itself it's a very very painful uh, story. Uh, the painful thing is that it's it's hard to 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 bring it back to one decision or to someone who is who took the, a certain decision and said, well, and this caused the whole thing. No, it's a chain of decisions, and it's 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 a variety of um, people who were who were involved and and caused this drama. But I felt I was there. I was part of a system of a, a coalition that was partly responsible for what happened. So when I was asked, do you want to play a role in helping these people? Then I said, of course. I, so as a volunteer, I'm, 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 I'm part of now trying uh, the effort to, uh, to fix this. Um, and it's, painful, it's a painful story, but we are trying to, to really fix it and bring hope back to these, uh, to these uh, uh, families that are hurting so much. So um, as you previously mentioned, the PVV or the Freedom Party, had a big win in the latest election. Yes. Many people, including Kasmude, who's a preeminent scholar on populism that we had on our stage in November, 
um, put the fault on the VVD breaking the cordon sanitaire yeah. and opening up to govern with the Freedom Party. Do you agree with his statement? Yes, I think they made a mistake. I think there was a mistake. So there was last summer, uh, almost a year ago, that they opened the door for the Populist Party to, uh, to work with them. So they made a, a few mistakes, I mean several mistakes. The mistake, I think, to break up with the coalition while the compromise was there, was on the table, was they were very close. They, they, they uh, narrowed the gap between the different uh, parties within the coalition. So they, I think they should have taken the compromise that was on the table. They did not. So they made migration the central issue of the whole campaign of the elections while they were not trusted by people who want less migration. So you, you, you make it the central theme and you're not trusted on the very theme you make big, you're making big. So, so that, that was a mistake. Then opening the door for the Freedom Party, that's a different choice. For example, when you look at the um, uh, a right-wing party in, in, in uh, Belgium, uh, NVA, they said, we want less migration, but we will never work together with Vlaams uh, Belang. I mean, the, the populist right-wing party, similar to Freedom Party, and this, right-wing party became the biggest party in uh, Flanders, in, in, in the, the, the Dutch-speaking part of, uh, of Belgium. So you see that if you still, you, you, you can be faithful to your political conviction, but if you make clear that you will not be part of a coalition government with people who are undermining the rule of law, undermining democracy, undermining institutions like the uh, 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 judges and free press and science and, and whatever holds us together, whatever binds us together in a, in a free society, you're not working together with a party that's undermining these institutions. Um, you can win elections, be faithful to yourself and, 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 and work on real, real policy that makes a difference. I think they made, they made several mistakes. So from this I'm assuming, working with the PFV is not a compromise you'd be willing to make. Um, but why is that for you different, the choice to work with PFV, different than the issues you had joining Ritte Um Because there was a commitment with the parties that, that were part of the coalition uh, in, uh, under the leadership of Mark Rutte, there was a commitment to the rule of law, there was a commitment to the institution. So yes, we had our differences, deep differences. I mean, we had clashes, we had fights, we had everything, but it was within the framework of the rule of law, the framework of democracy, the framework of strong institutions that you want to strengthen. Uh, so you accept the rule of law, you accept the, the ruling of a judge. And then you have a party say, well, if the judge um, is against me, then it's a bad judge. If uh, democracy does not have the outcome, if parliament does not have the outcome that I like, it's a horrible parliament. Um, if the free press does not agree with me, they are liars. Um, I, th this Freedom Party has been undermining an institution that is holding us together. And, and it's, it's fragile. I mean, a free society and an um, open culture is a fragile um, constitution. And, 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 and you need to be very careful with speaking in this way about, about these institutions and, and the way the Freedom Party is doing that, it's undermining everything that, that binds us together. So that's very dangerous. So n no, it's, it is different. Do you have a commitment to the rule of law, democracy and institutions? Yes or no, that's the fundamental question. And I see the Freedom Party doesn't have this commitment. So now they are saying we, are, we will behave as a minister. We will, I mean, that was the past. Now we will behave differently. If these fundamental positions are just Indifferent. I mean, if, if you just can exchange um, your views in a way that, that, that well, it doesn't give me any, any confidence that, that it's a true conviction and that they are truly committed to the rule of law and, and our institutions. I mean, it's, it's just a political position that they will change when, uh, whenever that is needed. So, but at the same time, of course, the PFA now has an extremely large seat count. Would it even be possible to avoid making a coalition with them, in your opinion? Um, well, I, I, I could only speak for myself and for the party that I was re representing. I could not imagine a coalition with the Freedom Party. 
So other parties, they, they, they have to make their own choices. But still, if you like, like in Flandre, like in Belgium, if you are clear, they say, well, we might share certain opinions and certain views. We might have something in common, but still, if you don't have this commitment to the rule of law and, and, and democracy, we will not work together. Um, then, then, then you see you can even win win the election. So there is an alternative. Um, but now it looked like that uh, Labour Party and the Greens they were the biggest enemy. Mm. Uh, I mean, they're the worst people uh, in the world. While there are good servants, I mean, there are good people within that party you could work with. So they, the 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 the, the, the right wing Liberal Party, they, they created their 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 own own problem, and now. They broke the cordon sanitaire. They, they they broke the barrier, and they will never be able to to go back. So not everyone in your party has been as principled about this as you. Uh, Eppo Bruins is now going to be the minister of education. How does that make you feel? Um, uncomfortable. I know him personally very well. I I we worked together for years and also after we, 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 we left Parliament, I mean, we stayed in contact. Um, and for me, it's when I, a political leader, the political leader of your party says, we, we will not be part of this coalition. Um, I think being loyal to each other and being like a, like a family and, and staying together, for me, that's a very important value. He chose differently and, well, he has the freedom to do so. But personally, I mean, I was a little bit uh, disappointed. So if he tries to come back to Christian Union after this government? It, that's, that's, that's not up to me, but uh, um, the party leader, uh, my successor, Mirjam Bicker, said, well, we, we, will, we will not uh, kick him out. Uh, then he said, well, I will, um, uh, I will walk out while being a minister in, in this coalition. And when that, is, when that has ended, I mean, I will, I will go back to the party. I guess he will be welcome. Uh, welcome back. You guess? As Are you a, happy as with a, that? As a, or? As, a, as a prodigal son, <laughs> as as the lost son. I mean, as the, as, as the it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a uh, okay. No, I, I'm 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 in a secular environment. And, no, I get and, a prodigal son. I understand. you know the prodigal joke. son. Okay, I, I, okay. It's it's just that D sixty six and other parties have been very clear that if you join that coalition, there's no getting back. Is it because maybe the prodigal son analogy here makes Christian Union a little bit more forgiving, or? Well, we we don't have a culture of kicking people out and and and, and being hateful to people who make a different choice. I mean, uh, I was disappointed. I I'm I'm, uh, I'm uncomfortable with it, um, but it's it, for the rest. It's uh, it's up to him, and I hope um, he will be a good minister. I mean, he will be very important uh, for you all here. Uh, on that note, I think we have some time for audience questions. Uh, does anyone have a question they'd like to ask? Someone will come out by with a mic. Is there? Uh, you've said you believe the rule of law to be sacred and that the policies of the PVV are very uh, worrying. Um, um, oh, sorry, I got mixed up. Uh, yeah, Wilders has, in his most recent election bid, combined um, claims that he wants to preserve the Christian character of the Netherlands with overall kind of an anti-Muslim and xenophobic sentiment and the NSA, uh, who was found, who, which was founded by a former member of the Christian party, is now in coalition with the PVV. Uh, you said that you believe the rule of law is to be sacred and that the policies coming from the PVV are worrying. What do you believe a Christian party should do when the rule of law is challenged? in the name of Christianity by someone who is not a good representation of Christian values? Um, I guess this is representing your own view. I mean, this is, uh, you have a problem with that, yeah. Um, I think preserving Christian tradition or culture is not a political goal. I mean, it's very hard to make that a political goal. I mean, justice, that's a political goal. That's a, that's, that's a political agenda. Um, uh, treating everyone equally and, and, and uh, protecting uh, freedom. Um, of course, I hope there will be a Christian culture in the Netherlands. I hope uh, that, that the church will stay alive and will be influential and a blessing for our country. But that can never be a political goal. Um, you cannot serve that goal with political means. That's very dangerous. Whenever 
any government has religious, a religious agenda in a sense, making people more or less religious, that's very dangerous. Um, you see it in Iran, you see it in Saudi Arabia, um, and it shouldn't be the goal here. When religion is used, whatever religion, to oppress people or, or, or to limit freedom of other people or limit personal freedom, then a government stu should step in. So, well, um, religious freedom is never, uh, 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 how do you say, is, is, isn't the same as f the freedom to oppress others or misuse freedom. So then you have to protect freedom in, all, um, in other ways. So, um, uh, of course, when, he, when, when Geert Wilders is using these words, I mean, he is addressing people with a Christian background and, and, and of course, trying to, to gain votes. So when I was, um, for example, in, in, a, in a debate with him, when I was defending religious freedom also for people with another uh, belief and another faith, people of other faith, for example, a Muslim, then he said, you are not a true Christian. You are a terrible Christian. I'm, I'm, I'm the right guy because I am defending uh, Christianity. So of course, that's that's something that he's using these words he's uh, he's using, uh, but to me, that's not the the right the right policy. Yeah, and sorry, maybe I didn't ask my question correctly towards the end. But and what do you believe is the role of a Christian party when that happens? When somebody does use Christianity in that way for political gains? Well, uh, speak up. As I as I have been trying to do, um, so whenever uh, religion is used to oppress others, and it can be in different names, it can be in name of Christianity, it can be in the name of Islam, it can be in any other conviction, then you need to speak up. Uh, but also when it's done in the name of of, of Christianity, um, and I believe freedom is 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 very important. Also the freedom to not believe in in anything or n not being uh, a believer anymore. I mean, you have the freedom. Um, so personally, I hope everyone um, gets to know the God of the Bible, but I will never force anyone uh, and never use political means. So I, I, I cannot allow others to use political means to force people to believe differently, to behave differently in a religious aspect. Um, so yeah, speak up. That's the, that's the response. And of course, you've left the world of politics now. Yes. Um, and if you look at the amount of party leaders and parliamentarians that have left the government, uh, left parliament, parliament. Left, left politics, um, infamously Kaag, because her yep. family yep. simply couldn't yep. deal with the risk to her safety. Yep. Um, the guy that called her a witch has been yep. rewarded with yep. being the biggest party. Exactly. Has politics simply become a too nasty of a place to work? Not too nasty, but it's sometimes very nasty. That 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 is true. And when it comes to Sigrid Kaag, I mean, it's a very painful story, because she was an, an, an um, someone who was serving international bodies and was coming back and wanted to serve her her own country, want to come back, brought her family. Um, she was very much impacted by this culture, and it was because all of a sudden she came here, and it was kind of kind of a shock to her, I guess. Uh, for us being here, I mean, we got to know, I mean, we, we got used to that climate and that culture bit by bit grew gradually into it. I mean, it's, it's yeah, I, 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 we all have, have had issues of security and court cases and, and, that's, and that's hard. And, and as, I, as I was mentioning, uh, social media especially has been terrible. And that's really undermining a, 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 an open climate, an open culture of discussion, disagreeing, and and we, yeah, we see it in in all all parts of society, um, and probably as well maybe in university. I mean, how much openness do we really have to listen to someone with another conviction? As we are witnessing now, um, a lot of tension in the world because of wars in Ukraine, Russia, uh, Gaza, Israel. Um, and you see the tension. I mean, you feel the tension everywhere. So it's not only in politics, it's in, in society, and I guess probably also in university. I mean, how much openness do we, do we have ourselves to listen to others? Um, it's rare to see politicians that have positive approval ratings in this current climate. Uh, however, you were able to re remain quite popular, also with people from 
different ideological backgrounds. How is that something you were able to do? Not everyone liked me, so I was not. You don't think uh, that you had a higher approval rating than, a, for example, a car or another? Yeah, well, that was maybe because I'm I was not that of a political threat. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, uh, it's it's maybe easier to like someone with five seats than to like someone with thirty seats or. Uh, um, so I don't know. I mean, I cannot answer that uh, that that question. I, I I try to be faithful to myself. I try to be honest. The difficult thing of of being in politics, I thought always. I, I thought when I'm honest about my intentions, when I'm honest about the way I came to to make a decision, maybe people will still disagree, but they will trust my motivation. They will trust my uh, my motives. Um, and I I understood, especially in 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 COVID time, I mean that trust, I mean is really uh, breaking down. I mean it is it is it is disappearing. So even when I was completely honest about my motives. Still, people were saying, "Well, you're part of that conspiracy. You are part of the the World Economic Forum, uh, w whatever agenda." Um, and then, so sometimes even within my own party. So when we have this discussion in the summer of '22 with uh, nature and agriculture standing uh, opposite of each other, with a huge debate with the the, the flags. Uh, um, upside down. I mean, it was tearing us, our, our, our society apart. I felt within my own party and within the Christian uh, community, a lot of people didn't trust me anymore. And that was painful because I, I don't mind if you disagree with me, but not trusting, that's, that's, that's very painful. But that's, that's part of political culture, I guess. Um, about political culture, I think you've hinted on this uh, before. Um, the political discussion climate is becoming quite nasty, but it's but not everyone is affected uh, equally. So women and minorities, you've been an incredibly prominent voice mm -hmm. specifically around the fight against anti-Semitism. Yes. Why is that a particularly important issue for you to focus on? For me, political fights always started with a personal encounter. For example, I was fighting human trafficking that started with an encounter with uh, a victim from Ghana with Medjib, I mean, it broke my heart. Uh, I had a fight against the, 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 the way uh, labor migrants were being treated because I saw it with, with my own eyes. When I um, had meetings and encounters with members of the Jewish community and I saw, for example, here in this, in this city, how Jewish schools have to be protected, how police with, with, with guns are protecting schools of Jews, I mean, it broke my heart, simply broke my heart. And um, for me, it was like, it was a, a key issue. If, if we, are, as a free society, are not able to protect the smallest minorities, one of the smallest minorities we have, the Jewish community, if we are not able to protect them, then what can I say about the rule of law? What can I say about freedom? I mean, I, I, we lose our position, we lose freedom, if the smallest, the smallest minority is not free and safe itself. Um, so it was, it, it, it was about ourselves. It was our, ab about our society. And of course, there's a l it's very sensitive in, 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 in the light of history. I mean, what happened here in Amsterdam and, 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 and all parts of society 80, uh, 85 years ago. I mean, we have a very painful history. So I felt the obligation, I felt very much the urge to say, well, not in my name, not in my time, and I will do whatever I can to step up. So obviously after October 7th, the number of anti-Semitic incidents has risen exponentially. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, that has also created a lot of responses from politicians, some of which, not to mention him again, but builders who pit anti-Semitism uh, use it as to pit Jew Jewish people against uh, often Muslim immigrants. Mm. How can you make sure that while speaking out against anti-Semitism, you avoid it being a political play and simply politicizing some of the very real pain well, it, a lot of Jewish communities experience? In the first place, it is a political issue. I mean, security and safety, uh, freedom of a small minority, that is a political issue. Um, but not misusing it to, to, to hit on others, that's, that's important. Um, 
you have to be very honest about facts, about um, your intentions, about um, the policy you are proposing. Um, so many people then say, well, you have to be honest about where, where does anti-Semitism come from? So when you are right-wing, you like to hear it comes from Islam or it comes from, from, from Muslims. When you are on the maybe on the left side of the political spectrum, you like to hear it comes from uh, Thierry Baudet or it comes from right wing. Uh, well, the reality is it has different sources, and the reality is it was in in so called Christian Europe that Jews were not safe. I am my second name is Martin, named after Martin Luther, so one of the reformers of the of the church. So my parents liked him because he was a central figure in uh, uh, European Christianity. But he wrote a horrible book about Jews. Horrible book. So it's part of my tradition. So you have to be very honest about the past. You have to be very honest about the lack of, of courage in the Second World War, where even Christians were looking away and not protecting uh, Jews, the Jewish community, and we had the highest percentage of Jews being taken away and killed of all of Western Europe. That was the Netherlands. Because we were faithful civil servants, so we just worked together with, uh, with the Nazis. So you have to be very honest about your past, you have to be very honest about, about the current climate, where does it come from, anti-Semitism, it comes from the left, it comes from the right, it comes from parts, not all, parts of the Islamic uh, community, and sometimes it has Christian roots. So you have to be very honest about all these root causes and all these um, communities where, where it comes from, and then you have to face it. You have to work together with all good uh, powers and all good um, people who are willing to stand up and, and, and fight for freedom for any minority, and in this particular case, the Jewish uh, minority. Whatever, whatever background, whatever conviction. Um, so don't use it for other means. Be very honest about causes. Be very honest about the history. The history, the past, be very honest about your policy and work together with everyone of good faith. Um, within the evangelical movement, there was quite a large support for Israel. Um, however, part of the support is tying into the second coming of Christ and Judgment Day and the belief in that. Uh, how much is your support for Israel linked to those beliefs? You know, not to like like ID of end times or um, for me it, it well anti-Semitism for me it's it's very very hard to understand. Um, I simply I, I I cannot like from a human perspective. Um, I understand hatred. I understand hatred towards minorities in general. But what I do not understand is why. I, anti-Semitism has always been there. That's, that's very hard to, 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 to grasp. So, yes, I, I have a kind of religious, biblical understanding of that problem. But again, that's not what is um, politically relevant. So, um, what is political relevant is when you speak about a free society, when you speak about the rule of law, then you should make sure, you have to make sure that it's free and that there is a rule of law, there is justice also for the Jewish uh, minority. And uh, for example, I was um, working together with Dylan Yazilgus, the leader of the PVD, the Liberal Party. So she's very, very secular. I mean, she's not religious at all. Uh, but we were absolutely together in this. And uh, we were committed to the fight against anti-Semitism. Though we have different deeper conviction. I mean, as a Christian myself, as a non-religious person herself. Um, so these ideas about end time, about whatever, I think it's not relevant when it comes to the issue of is this a free and safe country for the Jewish community, yes or no. So, But not to say about the anti-Semitism question, but more about your, your general support for Israel. Does that does your belief tie into there at all? No, because again, I can translate, I mean, whatever conviction and whatever faith I have, I can translate it in secular language um, in a world where anti-Semitism um, always comes up sooner or later, shows its ugly face. Um, having 
one country, one tiny country where Jews are welcome and have the, um, the right to govern themselves, I think that's, that's a very important piece, part of my political conviction, that Israel, yes, has the right to exist. And that doesn't say where are the borders exactly. But of course there has to be peace with Palestinians. Of course there has to be um, justice and, 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 and freedom for Palestinians as well. So that's a, that's a very difficult, tough political issue. But the existence of Israel that's being questioned right now, for me that is, that is very, very hard to, to, to understand and very hard to take when I see that people are shouting. I mean, even here in, in, in these circles, from the sea to the river, I mean, when you are saying that, then you're saying there shouldn't be a Jewish state. There shouldn't be this one place where Jews are safe and welcome wherever they come from. Well, with our history and with a world that has witnessed anti-Semitism everywhere and all the time, I mean, I, I simply do not understand that you, that you scream slogans like, like that. For me, that's, that's, that's very hard. Um, so moving on from the discussion about anti-Semitism, which we'd like to talk more about, but we have uh, time constraints, we'd like to zoom out a bit. Um, according to Kierkegaard, for true religious belief, one must make a leap of faith and to embrace something that one cannot, uh, through logical deduction or direct, or fully, under uh, fully understand. Uh, is this something you personally had to do for religious belief? That's, a, that's uh, okay, you, you have to repeat that again. Excuse me, sorry. So, Slowly. one must make a leap of faith. A leap of faith, yeah. And to embrace something that cannot be either fully understood or one cannot fully know through logical deduction, but one must choose, to, in a sense, to trust in. Um, the, the, why I am a Christian, that's not... Um, it didn't start with reasoning, but it, it, it started with an encounter, personal encounter with a reality, with a person with the name Jesus Christ. But um, it should be reasonable. And so I cannot continue to believe in something that is unreasonable, that is silly, that has no evidence at all. Um, so, of course, I mean, I, 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 um, I, ha I also have reasons to believe, but it didn't start. So, a religious conviction usually doesn't start with reasoning, but it has to make sense. Mm. Because I, I, I don't believe in dwarves, I don't believe in, in, in uh, whatever creature you might, up, you, you might uh, come up with. Um, no, I believe in something historical, I believe in something with a long tradition, I believe in something that goes back to real events. Um, so, yes, there are good reasons to believe, and I, I, but this, the thing is, if I sum up all my reasons that probably, I, I don't know if you are a Christian or not, but probably it will not convince you unless you have a personal encounter in yourself. So, yes, there is a leap of faith, but it's not a leap of faith in, in, in a dark hole and not a leap of faith in something that you, that you cannot reason with. I mean, yes, you can reason with faith. You can reason with, does God exist? Is there, ev I mean, are there clues, clues of um, something called uh, God? I mean, uh, and yes, there are clues. There are reasons. There, there, and, 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 and there is good reason to um, be a Christian. Um, but yes, it's, it's, it's in the beginning and the end, it's something of the heart. It's something of a deeper conviction and on, a, on an other level than only reasoning and, um, and your mind. Regardless of personal encounters or matters of the heart, what is true is that the Netherlands is much less religious than it used to be. What do you think the place of religious figures like you uh, in a secular political world, mm. as well as religious parties, as Christian Union, are in a world that has become very, very secular? Uh, well, sometimes I was the only Christian people people knew. And um, so when you had like discussion, they said, well, we need a Christian. And I was a kind of uh, um, Christian they, they took, well, we need a Christian, so we take you. Um, 
I think it's 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 very important to to be visible, to speak up, uh, to serve your country uh, out of faith, uh, out of love of your neighbor, uh, and 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 to make visible that um, Christianity has its place. Christian the Christian tradition is very valuable, and and it's a living tradition. I mean, it's not something of the past. It's something of now and something of the future. I mean, the future of the church is less white, is less Western, is much more Asian and African and Latin America. Uh, but even here, I, I, there is a very long tradition with deep roots. Um, and till today, I see that people are being touched by scripture, being touched by the story of Jesus Christ, and it will continue to be uh, the case. And I just simply want to share well. And you can even be uh, um, a normal person, and you can even <laughs> be in politics and sit here in the UVA and uh, discuss uh, uh, current issues, of course. Uh, we'd like to thank you for this conversation, and we'd like to thank you all for coming to our last intro of the year. Hope you enjoyed our programming over the last year, and hope to see you all next year. Uh, should you miss us terribly, you can still go to our YouTube or Spotify to listen to past interviews, or listen to our podcast, The Ivory Tower, in which we discuss um, things with academics who have inspired us. Um, that ho should be enough, hopefully, to satisfy your room for discussion craving until September. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.